Upgrading components in your PC can be one of the most difficult parts about owning a PC. Want a new CPU? Well, have fun swapping the motherboard. Want a new power supply? Have fun cable managing. But the most rigorous upgrade would have to be a case swap. So today, I'm going to show you how to upgrade and case swap your PC. First things first, you're going to want to pick a case that all of your current components can fit within. For example, my case here, the Corsair 750D, is a full tower, and the case I'm switching to, the Game DS Talos P1, is a mid tower. There may be points where some things simply don't fit, but don't worry. You can always get creative as you'll see later in this video. Now you may ask Barry, why would you want to go from a full size to a mid? And that's a good question. Ultimately, it came down to space for me. Don't get me wrong, I love the Obsidian Giant, but sometimes you just need more space. Plus, it was kind of falling apart. Don't blame Corsair, that's this guy's fault. Pro tip for future hardware builders, never own cats. You did this. <laughs> this is all you. <laughs> <laughs> Once you've found the right case for you, it's time to begin. Before we start just ripping components out though, please make sure there aren't any USBs still plugged into your motherboard as this could damage the board on the way out, or you may simply just lose your Bluetooth adapter. After that, you can start removing components. Start with the easy stuff like graphics cards and RAM before moving on to the more difficult components like power supplies and liquid coolers. Be especially careful with liquid coolers as sometimes the thermal paste can stick like glue to the CPU and rip it out, which is what happened to me when I was removing my cooler. Must have tightened it with some muscles. <laughs> I just bought some muscles and tightened them with... Oh crap, it ripped my processor out. It ripped oh, wait. the processor out. Is it okay? Does it... it looks like it's okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Wow, you must have had some really sticky paste on yeah, there. seriously. Luckily the CPU was fine, but this has happened more than just once, so try to be deliberate with everything you remove, and always be sure to keep your remove components somewhere safe and away from static. Once you've removed your cooler, you can remove your spinning drives and SSDs. Keeping these things in order is very important, so be sure to remember which drive you had your operating system installed on. After that, I recommend removing the power supply. This is probably going to be the most annoying part as all the cables need to be removed along with it. This can be especially annoying if your power supply is non-modular. be funny if you hurt yourself on film. I can't hurt myself on this. Ah, the power supply cables have always been like one of my least favorite parts. They're annoying. You gotta like really especially push, like, come in and yeah the ones down here. Yeah. Now remember kids your power supply doesn't matter. You can get a $20 one, you can get a $50 one. If it's from China, it's better. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get Corsair or EVGA. My favorite is scam. My favorite is great value. Yes, great value power supply. <laughs> Once you have everything out of the case except for the motherboard, it's time to remove that. I like removing everything else first so as not to do any damage to the board. Also bear in mind that the cables are probably going to be annoying. Just work with them slowly and eventually they'll loosen up. Dude, these cables. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. What is your problem? You <laughs> <laughs> I also recommend keeping the CPU inside the motherboard just to ensure you don't bend any pins either on the board or CPU, depending on the brand and socket that you have. Once everything's fully removed, you're ready to grab your new case and repeat the same process, only backwards. Now in this case, we're also going to be upgrading. I'm going from the Ryzen 7 1700 to the Intel 8700K. I'm also switching from the Asus Crosshair 6 Hero to the ROG Strix H370F. Before we just throw everything in the case though, we should first prep our motherboard. Start with the CPU and be careful to put it in correctly. Next, you want to pop in the RAM. This always takes a little pressure, but be sure the teeth are lined up with the DIMM slots. Do that wrong and you face ruining either the RAM or the slot. It's also important to remember that if you are using a third-party cooler that you'll probably need to install some type of bracket onto the back of the board. Don't forget to do this before screwing the motherboard into the case. Another thing many first-time hardware builders don't know about is standoffs. Some cases come with them already installed or even as a part of the case, but using these ensure you don't ground out the motherboard when it's installed within the case. Now a lot of new motherboards come with the I.O. shield installed on the board, which is very handy, but if yours does not, make sure you have that in there before putting the motherboard into the case. Once you have it in there and aligned, you can go ahead and screw it down.
Now at this point I like to do a little bit of cable management. I know some people skip this part and that's more than fine, but I'm a bit particular about my cable management. A job as a computer hardware technician will do that to you. Make sure you route your cables in such a way that you'll see as few wires as possible through the front of the case. The front panel headers will probably be the most difficult part for beginners, so be sure to check the manual or front panel to find out where to plug these in. Then go ahead and plug in your USB 3, your USB standard, and your HD audio. After you've got the cabling out of the way, we can move on to our hard drives and SSDs. Now in this case, there wasn't an obvious place for my SSD. There were two hard drive slots, but nothing other than that. This is the part where you may need to do a little improvising, and we just ended up screwing the SSD on the back side of the case, which worked like a charm. Next comes the power supply. Now I already had a 1000 watt power supply that I'd gotten from Falcon Northwest before I left. However, GameD has decided to send out their new RGB 1200 watt power supply, which I simply couldn't turn down. I'll show you more of it when it's installed, but it's fully modular and has a glowing RGB fan inside that you can disable if RGB is simply not your thing. So we had to unplug these cables here and put these cables in here because this power supply wasn't fitting. Once we put these cords in, however, we realized that <laughs> the power supply just doesn't fit inside the case. Luckily for us, the drive bay here is removable. It does suck that we have to do that, but that is something that we now have to do. So, you know, one of those things, computer building inside a smaller case, it's not even that small, but it's a thing that happens. You have like an inch or an inch and a half. Mm. This moves us along to some more of that good old cable management. The easiest way to do this is plan out the root of your cables and try to hide the smaller ones behind the larger ones. The more useless cables like Molex and everything about Molex, screw this cable! <clears throat> cables like this can be adjusted by cutting the cable off at the first Molex connector. My case only requires one Molex connector, so removing the rest of these will not only clear up a lot of space cable-wise, but also slap Satan in the face a little bit as he's the only logical entity that could have designed Molex anyway. Once we've managed our cables a little bit, it's time to pop in our graphics cards. Now I did have to break these metal guards off this case in order to get both my cards in there, and I have to ask Game Diaz why they decided to use these types of guards. Don't get me wrong, it's fine so long as I have SLI and I use all those spaces. However, if I did decide to go back to one card, this now leaves me with missing guards which can let dust and bugs into my PC. Screwable guards is the best idea for case manufacturers for this reason, but for now, no big deal. When putting your graphics cards in, I recommend putting them in from bottom to top. It just makes the installation process a tiny bit easier. Once they're in, screw them down, plug in your VGA power cables, and you're good to go. Now it's time to install the liquid cooler. This case allowed me to take the roof right off, which made the process very easy. Just go ahead and screw the radiator evenly into the case. After that, you can apply thermal paste to your CPU and secure the water block onto the processor. Once you're done with that, you can plug in the CPU fans and pump. You're going to want to make sure everything is tight. You can get insufficient cooling from not using enough thermal paste, using too much thermal paste, not tightening the block down enough, but you also don't want to go too tight. Trust me, I'm making it seem more complicated than it actually is. Once the cooler's installed, we can finish up the last steps for our case. In this particular instance, the case I got has magnetic swinging glass doors. This is really nice, being as if I ever have an issue I need to take care of, all I would ever have to do is open the PC like a mini fridge and fix the problem. Once your computer's complete, it's time to boot it up and make sure it works. And that's how you case swap and upgrade your PC. I really hope this video was able to help you out. I want to give a huge thank you to Game Diaz for the PC case and power supply. This video could not have been made without you guys. Thank you all so much, screw Molex, and I'll see you next time.